I am exaggerating a little bit. Your planetary camera probably is working, but if you're just starting out with planetary imaging, it might not be working the way you think it is. Um, you can't, you can't just buy a planetary camera, stick it in a telescope, and take great pictures of uh, of planets. There, there are a few things you need to know. Uh, I'm going to link to a video, a lecture that Damien Peach gave. He is he is the god of planetary imaging. Well. He gave a great lecture that covers a lot of things, and there's a ton of information out there, so do some homework. But today we're going to talk about um, one specific aspect that a lot of people don't know, and that is your planetary camera. Um, <clears throat> if you buy a color planetary camera or even monochrome also, they're like this. Uh, they're sensitive beyond the, the visual, visual spectrum. They will pick up near-infrared and ultraviolet light. So a lot of people don't know that you, you need filters to use it at all. You need a filter in there. You either have to just pick up near IR or just your RGB filters or just UV. I think Venus would look good in UV. But you need filters in there. And uh, all I'm going to do tonight is take some video of a... Uh, I'm going to get an image of pro probably Jupiter. With, with and without filters so you can see what a difference even just uh, an, an IR UV cut filter makes. And there's a lot of things you need. Um, you'll also need an, at, an atmospheric dispersion corrector. That's this little doohickey right here. It's got prisms in it that counteract the uh, some of the horrible things that the atmosphere does to the light that's coming in. You probably want some kind of Barlow. I've got a 2.5 2 times power mate here and then I've got the ASI 224 MC and uh, <clears throat> you know there's a lot of a lot of pieces involved even to uh, even just you know your basic planetary image there's a lot of stuff you have to have going right one thing in that video that I just referenced Damien Peach uh, he mentioned uh, you need perfect collimation and that reminded me that I, I've never actually <laughs> dialed my collimation in because I'm just a lazy, terrible person. But uh, so tonight I'm gonna go and really try to zone in on my collimation. Hopefully we get some good seeing, and then I'll be able to shoot some images with and without. Uh, it's like a $40 IR cut filter, um, so you can see how big of a difference that makes, mainly in the color, but even in some detail. So uh, we'll wait for it to get dark, and we'll see you there. All right, just finished shooting the videos. I did a few with. The naked sensor, a few with the IR cut, and a few with an infrared filter, the uh, Pro Planet 742 from Astronomic. It uh, lets everything beyond 742 millimeters in. So let's go ahead and I don't know if I can. Do the no filter first. I'll see if I can open up more. No, it just does those three. <coughs> Okay. Okay. It's usually a good idea, but we're not going to do that. So, here are the uh, the finished images. Um, did the same exact processing on both of them on the. Uh, on the left here, we have, this is the image with the, the IR UV cut filter, and on the right, this is without. Now, I am surprised 
at the detail level. Um, I really thought it was going to be a clear winner with the cut filter on the sharpness. But my seeing is so bad that it could have just been a trick of the seeing. And, you know, it, my seeing is probably not to the level where you will notice the sharpness in cutting out the infrared and UV. I'm thinking that's what the, what the issue is because, you know, as far as the, the detail level goes, they're basically dead ringers. I mean, maybe there's even some spots in the, without the cut filter that might look a little better. So, you know, maybe just a trick of the seeing. Uh, the big takeaway is the color and contrast. Uh, the color and contrast is much better with the cut filter. Looks much more natural, uh, much better contrast. And with the uh, with out the cut filter in, you've got it just looks kind of washed out and pink. You know, so definite win for the for the filter with the color. Uh, so yeah, that's that's the big takeaway. And you know, like I said, the seeing is so bad right now Jupiter is only 24 degrees over the horizon for this and it was very wavy it looked like I was looking at it underwater you know and somebody kept hitting the surface of the water uh, so yeah not very good seeing not ideal test conditions but it's a, you know for $40 it's a definite win in the color and contrast category uh, so yeah I'm gonna say it's it's worth it holy smokes I'm tired um so yeah that's that test i will call that concluded um surprising on the detail but uh not unexpected win for the color and contrast and just to be a shithead this is saturn with the uh with the infrared filter on it and it's i i can't believe how clear that is the the infrared light just gets right to the atmosphere atmosphere so much easier um, this, this was with the Astronomic Pro Planet 742. It lets all in all the wavelengths over 742 millimeters. Um, so a lot of people will take an infrared image like this and then add their color image to it. They'll use the infrared as a luminance and then add color to it for a really sharp image. And, uh, that, that's just beautiful. But anyways, uh, Clear skies. Thanks for watching. Um, definitely worth it to cut out the infrared just for the color. And probably if you if you've got good seeing, if Jupiter is not so low for you, it would probably help you with your focus and sharpness too. Um, but yeah, with bad seeing, it's just not going to make much of a difference. I don't think. Did I already say clear skies? <laughs>